This new GPU dock can change the way you game on your handheld or your mini PC. It's got a built-in power supply. It also supports Oculink and USB 4. Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all-new AUSTAR AG01 eGPU dock. Now this thing's pretty cool, but there is one drawback and we'll talk about that in just a bit. This does have its own built-in power supply, so we don't need an ATX or an SFX power supply hanging off the side of it. And I did want to pick up the version that supported both interfaces, Oculink and USB 4. This thing is pretty sleek and it's put together really well. 400 watt power supply, two 8-pin PCIe connectors, and they recommend GPUs with a total TGP up to 250 watts. So we're talking like an RTX 4070 or an RX 7700 XT or lower than those. Over here on this side, we've got our power button, Oculink connector, and USB 4. I did mention that there was one downside to this eGPU, and it's the fact that it doesn't actually output power over USB 4, so it can't charge the device that it's plugged into, which is definitely a downside to this unit. But inside of the box, along with the eGPU dock itself, we do get our two 8-pin PCIe power connectors, USB 4 cable, our power cable, and an Oculink cable. Pricing isn't that bad for what we're getting here. If you want to pick up the AG01 that only has that Oculink connection, it's $159. Or if you want to pick up the AG02 with USB 4, it's coming in at $219. And you got to keep in mind, this doesn't come with the GPU, so you have to add your own. So I usually go with NVIDIA cards like the uh, RTX 3060, 4060, or even the 4070. But I think for this setup here, I'm going to be going with the Radeon RX 7700 XT. This is the ASRock version. We've got 12 gigs of VRAM here. And the big reason I wanted to go AMD for this video here with the dock was because we're going to be using this with the ROG Ally X over USB 4. I will have a full video coming up using Oculink with this. I'm waiting on a new mini PC to come in and we're definitely going to be testing it there. Setup with the dock is actually really simple. They've got this oversized thumb screw here that's going to hold our GPU in place. And with some of these eGPUs, I've seen some crazy bracketing systems. This is just really simple. We'll go ahead and tighten it down. It's going to hold that GPU right in place. Now we need to connect our power. So we've got two PCIe 8-pin connectors here. That's exactly what this 7700 XT takes. So we'll just go ahead and place them in here. And you can actually clean this up really nicely with some Velcro ties if you want to. Or if you know you're going to keep this in place, you can always zip tie these together. But either way, they're still pretty short cables, so it is a clean little setup. And once it's all together, it looks a little something like this. Now, of course, this is a huge card. ASRock always takes these cards to the extreme with their cooling systems. I'm not worried about this thing overheating whatsoever, especially because we're out in the open air right now. But of course, you could always go with the smaller card if you want to. And I usually recommend like an RTX 3060 or an RTX 4060. But I wanted to go all AMD because I'm usually running NVIDIA cards. Like I mentioned, USB 4 connection here doesn't do any power out, so I've got this plugged into a little dock, and I've also got it plugged into the wall to keep that battery up to par. I was actually under the impression that this would do at least 45 watts. It's not mentioned over on their website, but you know, going into it, I really thought we'd have at least some PD power out. Luckily, with the ROG Ally X, we do have two USB-C connections. One's going to be USB 3.2, the other USB 4. I didn't have to install any extra drivers or anything like that. GPU is now initializing, and we're going to go all video out of the GPU itself. So HDMI to the larger monitor, give it a few seconds, it should initialize for us. And now, instead of using the built-in Radeon iGPU with the X, we've got that RX 7700 XT connected. I'm going to move in a bit closer. I'll plug this into my game capture so we can get a better look at everything. Okay, so now that we've got the GPU connected, you can see we've got that Ryzen Z1 Extreme. We've still got access to the Radeon graphics here, but what I did was allocate one gig of VRAM. With the ROG Ally X, we get a total of 24 gigs, and usually we've got eight gigs dedicated to that iGPU. That way, it's just gonna bring more over to system RAM. But we're not gonna be using that iGPU because of course we've got that Radeon RX 7700 XT. Now this does have Oculink, but we're connected over USB 4. Something I noticed here, which I kind of got a little excited about, if we open up GPU-Z here, usually when we're testing with Thunderbolt 3, Thunderbolt 4, or USB 4 eGPU, right here, you can see the card itself is PCIe X16 4.0, but it's running at X4 4.0. 
Usually, these are only running at X4 3.0. I actually haven't seen this yet with other USB 4E GPU docks, so I'm kind of excited about this. They do recommend GPUs with the total TGP or total graphics power of 250 watts. Even though we've got a 400 watt power supply in here, I just wanted to make sure we're safe here with the 7700 XT. If we run Furmark, you can see our GPU power does jump up to around 290 watts. While gaming, even at 1440p, it's not going to run at a continuous 290 watts. Furmark is really stressing out that RX 7700 XT. So yeah, I do think we're going to be just fine with this. And the first thing I did here was run a couple GPU benchmarks just to get an idea of what kind of performance we're working with here. Here's Firestrike. And with this setup, we scored a 30,812. Just to give you an idea, on the built-in ROG Allies iGPU, we're around 7,640, and this is a maxed out TDP, 35 watts. I also ran Time Spy, and we're seeing a pretty impressive score here of 14,286. Again, wanted to show you here, just with the iGPU, we're around 3,502. And I knew we'd definitely have a nice jump in GPU performance, adding a dedicated GPU. But of course, these are synthetic benchmarks, and now it's time to check out some real-world gaming. We're going with 1440p across the board. And the first game I wanted to test here was God of War Ragnarok. We're at 1440p, ultra, no FSR, we're not using any frame gen or anything like that, and it's looking pretty good. I haven't had any dips under 60, but there's a lot more we can get out of this game, because with the initial release, they did include FSR 3.1 and AMD's frame gen. And on a graphics card like the RX 7700 XT, we should see a massive jump in performance. And yeah, just enabling frame gen here, we're now seeing an average of around 133 FPS, which is more than enough. I mean, I don't mind locking these games down at 60, but of course we wanted to see how high we could take it at 1440p. And I know some people don't like frame gen, but you know, it definitely helps out. And on these higher end cards, as opposed to an iGPU, input latency is very minimal. Okay. You might know that ray tracing on these AMD cards, even if you're working with a 7900 XTX, isn't great, especially with something like Cyberpunk 2077. But here, we're actually at 1440p ray tracing ultra, and that's because they recently updated the game and added FSR 3. It's not 3.1, but I've also enabled AMD's frame gen here, and we can now run this game at an average of around 83 FPS with ray tracing ultra enabled. I've tested ray tracing with these AMD cards and never really had good luck. Like I mentioned, even on the highest end, 7900 XTX, not a good performer. But with the newest update to the game, we're seeing much better performance. 1440p, very high, no FSR, we're at a native 1440p here. Seeing an average of around 81 FPS with this game here, and yeah, I mean, it does look really good. If you've been playing this at a lower resolution, lower settings, and you do have a chance to kind of max this out even at 1440, it's well worth playing through again. Black Myth, Wukong, 1440p, high with no FSR. Unfortunately, at very high settings, or even the cinematic setting that they have here, we can't run this over 60. We're seeing averages of around 82 FPS with this, and I mean, it's definitely really playable, but I was kind of hoping to totally max this game out. Either way, I wouldn't mind playing through it just like it is. And finally, Red Dead 2, 1440p, ultra, and I hate the way they have these settings. Uh, the slider bar is all the way over to the right, so we're maxed out, and I'm not sure if I could go down and actually turn some of those settings up or not. Some games do allow that. I actually haven't checked on this one. But with this, we did need to enable some FSR. So performance here with the new AUSTAR AG02 is great. I love the form factor. 400 watts is plenty. I mean, we're working with mid-range GPUs here, and they can definitely get the job done when you compare them to like an iGPU. They're saying up to an RTX 4070 or the RX 7700 XT. I'm sure we could squeeze by with an RTX 4070 Ti on this unit. 
But the big downside here is there's no power output over USB 4, which is going to leave some of the handhelds on the market that support USB 4 eGPUs in the dark because a lot of them only have a single USB 4 port. With the ROG Ally X and the Legion Go, it'll be totally fine because we have that extra port we can charge over, but it would have been really nice if it at least did 45 watts out. Now, of course, we still haven't tested Oculink, and I'm waiting on a new mini PC with Oculink support to test this out with. We've got a brand new CPU coming in with that one, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this thing pairs up. But if you're interested in learning a little more about this eGPU dock, I will leave some links in the description. If you've got any questions or you want to see any other GPU tested with this, just let me know in the comments below. Like always, thanks for watching.